So this is it, the long-awaited comeback for the Battlefield franchise. After the rough ride of Battlefield 2042, which many fans felt lost the series' signature focus and polish, the team behind Battlefield 6 is set out to win back your trust. Underpinning this return is the ever-powerful Frostbite engine. The engine built by DICE specifically for large-scale, destructible warfare. Frostbite has been refined for this new title, enabling impressive environments, dynamic destruction and smooth large player battles. And here's an important technical note for your PC setup. Battlefield 6 does not launch with real-time ray tracing support. The developers made a strategic decision to prioritize performance, stability and compatibility across a wide range of hardware, rather than chasing ultra-high-end visuals at the cost of frame rate and smoothness. Which means whether you're playing on a high-end rig or a mid-tier PC, this guide will help you tweak and optimize settings to get the best out of Battlefield 6. High frame rates, low latency and immersive action without unnecessary compromises. So let's dive right into it. So starting with the advanced settings, let's look at anti-aliasing. Since I'm on an AMD card, I sadly couldn't test DLAA, but I compared every other option. Here FSR3 delivers the best balance between image quality and performance. It's sharp, stable and keeps frame rates consistent. XESSAA looks comparable to FSR3 in terms of visuals, but it demands a lot more resources, making performance the worst by far. Also keep in mind, if you're using any upscaler, your anti-aliasing setting usually gets overwritten, so this only matters when you're not upscaling. If you're after pure performance, stick with TAA, but overall FSR3 is still the best choice here. And if you have an NVIDIA card, stick with DLAA. Moving on to the upscaling techniques. With FSR3 quality, I saw a performance gain of around 47%. XESS quality also improves performance, but only by about 29%. Now XESS can perform better on Intel Arc GPUs since they use dedicated XMX cores, while AMD and Nvidia cards rely on DP4A instructions. Just a small technical note to keep in mind. Visually, XESS shows slightly less shimmering and feels more stable overall, though it can look a bit softer in vegetation. FSR3 is generally solid, a bit soft at times, but it can easily sharpen the image through the game settings or your GPU driver. Performance-wise, FSR3 still leads, and just like I mentioned earlier, if you're on NVIDIA, use DLSS whenever it's available. And as always, next up are the graphics presets, just to get a baseline and see how much performance we can actually squeeze out of Battlefield 6. Starting with the overkill preset at around 65 FPS in this test scene. Dropping to Ultra gives a solid 38% boost, landing a lot smoother already. Going further down to high improves performance by 43% over overkill, while medium gives a massive 74% increase. And finally, the low preset tops out with roughly an 88% performance gain compared to overkill. Moving on, let's take a closer look at how texture quality impacts visuals and performance. The only preset that really stands out is low. Textures become noticeably blurry across the game, especially on signs, decals and other small details. Everything above that, high, ultra or overkill, looks almost identical in motion. You can spot a slight difference between high and ultra when zooming in and comparing one to one, but it's something you'll never notice while actually playing. The real difference here comes down to VRAM usage. Higher presets can easily push memory consumption to the limit, especially on GPUs with 8GB or less. Even with more VRAM, there's still a chance of stutters if the texture cache overflows. As expected, if your VRAM isn't the bottleneck, performance stays identical across all settings. So I'd recommend sticking with high for most players to balance quality and stability. Next up is texture filtering, also known as anisotropic filtering in most other games. In my testing, there's no visible difference between the presets. Everything looks identical, whether you're on low, high or even overkill. However, VRAM usage does increase with the higher presets, especially on ultra and overkill without any actual gain in image quality. Performance stays exactly the same across the board since this feature is handled efficiently by the GPU hardware. So for this I'd recommend keeping it on high, it delivers the same visual result as the higher settings but avoids unnecessary VRAM overhead. Continuing with mesh quality, this setting controls how detailed world geometry and objects appear at distance. 
basically how far away the game keeps using high poly models before switching to simpler ones. In practice it also affects object pop-ins, higher settings minimize them, making the environment look more consistent when moving through the map. Performance wise though there's almost no difference between the presets. The setting is slightly more CPU intensive since it increases the number of objects and details being processed, but modern systems handle it without issue. So overall I'd recommend high or ultra here. They give you a smoother visual transition without any noticeable FPS loss. A good example of this is a temporary fence I tested. At lower settings the metal support bars visibly appear and disappear depending on how close you get. Raising the mesh quality reduces that effect noticeably. On a side note, I also noticed in this single player scene that at medium mesh quality some bushes didn't cast any shadows at all. This just might be bugged, but it's worth keeping in mind. Moving on we have terrain quality. This setting controls how much tessellation is applied to the ground and rock surfaces. At higher levels the terrain gains actual geometric depth instead of just relying on flat textures. So things like rocky surfaces and uneven ground appear more physically shaped and less painted on. However in real gameplay performance is essentially the same no matter which setting you choose. So the simplest recommendation here is to leave it on high. Next is undergrowth quality, which in theory should control how dense and detailed small ground foliage like grass and tiny plants appear. But in Battlefield 6 there's effectively no visual difference between low, medium and high in terms of actual foliage density or detail. Performance is also identical across all three, so you can just set it to high for the best overall look without losing any FPS. Now let's take a look at effects quality. This setting controls the particle effects you see during explosions, vehicle impacts and firefights. On the higher preset you'll get additional spark variations, more debris and particles that stay visible longer, adding a bit more visual intensity and realism to action heavy moments. However in my testing performance remained identical across all settings, even in large scale explosions and chaotic scenes, so there's no FPS gain or loss here. Still, to help keep 1% low smooth during heavy combat, I'd recommend using the lower setting, since these subtle visual extras are things you won't really notice while actually playing. Next up is volumetric quality, which controls the appearance of volumetric effects like fog, smoke layers, light shafts and atmospheric haze. Higher settings make these effects look thicker, softer and more natural, especially in scenes with strong lighting or weather effects. In terms of performance the impact isn't all too huge, but it's definitely more noticeable than the previous settings, mainly in areas with lots of fog or dense smoke. For the best balance between clarity and performance I'd recommend keeping this on high. It gives you the full visual atmosphere without dipping into unnecessary FPS loss. Now on to lighting quality. This setting controls how accurately light interacts with the environment. Things like how well areas are illuminated, how smooth transitions between light and shadow look and how much ambient light fills darker corners. What's interesting in Battlefield 6 is that the high setting actually gives a competitive advantage. It brightens more areas more effectively making enemies easier to spot especially in shadowy indoor sections or under foliage. Performance wise there is no difference at all between the presets so this one is a complete no brainer. Next is local light and shadow quality, which controls how detailed nearby shadows look and how clean their edges are. Performance wise there is virtually no difference between the presets even in busy scenes so you might as well set this to ultra to get the best looking shadows with 0 fps cost. Now sun shadow quality controls the resolution and softness of shadows cast by the sun, basically the large outer shadows you see on terrain, buildings and characters. In Battlefield 6 the setting has a much bigger performance impact in single player than in multiplayer. FPS starts to drop noticeably once you move into the ultra and overkill presets. The high setting still costs a little performance but not enough to notice during gameplay. It also produces softer and clearer shadows making visibility slightly better compared to medium. So my personal recommendation here is high for the best balance. If you need every last frame medium is still a solid fallback. One thing I also want to mention is the shadow level of detail behavior. When using anything below high the suncast shadows tend to switch to lower detail versions at certain distances. This becomes especially noticeable when aiming down sights or zooming in where the shadow edges can suddenly sharpen or simplify. Now this doesn't affect performance much but it can feel distracting, especially in competitive multiplayer where visual stability matters. This part is really down to personal preference but it's another reason why I'd recommend sticking with high, just to avoid these sudden level of detail shifts during firefights. 
Shadow filtering lets you choose between PCF and PCSS, and this one is really personal preference. PCF gives sharper, cleaner shadow edges, while PCSS and NVIDIA Gameworks Tech soften shadows for a more realistic look based on distance. When using PCSS compared to PCF, the performance drop for me was roughly 4.4%. Moving on to reflection quality. This setting controls how realistic reflections appear, including the clarity, sharpness and accuracy of what the surface reflects. On low, reflections may look blurry or simplified. On high, water reflects the environment in much more detail. You'll see sharper reflections on the sky, objects and lighting. And since performance is basically identical across presets, high is the best choice here to get the most visually appealing surface reflections without any FPS loss. Screen space reflections or SSR simulate reflections on surfaces like water, glass or polished floors by using what's currently visible on your screen. These give realistic dynamic reflections without the heavy performance costs of full ray tracing. If your main priority is a stable image and you're looking for competitive settings, I recommend turning SSR off. If you care more about visual quality and don't mind a slight performance hit, set SSR to high. This setting gives sharper, more accurate reflections which can noticeably improve the overall look of the game. Post-processing mainly affects visual effects like depth of field, motion blur and bloom. In practice, across all quality levels, there's almost no noticeable difference, and it doesn't impact performance. For a more stable and distraction-free image, though, I recommend deactivating or adjusting the following in-game camera settings. Weapon motion blur at 0, world motion blur at 0, camera shake amount 50, reduce sprint camera bobbing on, chromatic aberration off, vignette and film grain off as well. These tweaks help keep the image stable and clear without compromising visuals. And for last, we have one of the most demanding settings in the game. Screen space ambient occlusion and screen space global illumination. For ambient occlusion and global illumination, you can only choose one in Battlefield 6. GTAO or SSGI. GTAO adds subtle contact shadows where objects meet surfaces or are close to each other, giving the scene more depth and realism without affecting overall lighting. SSGI simulates real-time light bouncing, affecting the illumination of nearby objects and environments for richer lighting. However, SSGI is very demanding on performance. For example, high settings reduce performance by about 12%, going from 82 to 72 FPS. In short, GTAO is the more stable performance-friendly option in this game, while SSGI gives a more realistic lighting at a significant cost. In explicit ambient occlusion scenarios, there's practically no difference across all settings. So mainly other lighting settings are truly affected. The bottom line is to use GTAO high for the best balance. But if competitive settings are more important for you, I recommend turning this option off completely, both for visibility and performance. And here's another example of how these settings differ from each other when it comes to shadow darkening. As we can see, GTAO low produces the darkest shadows of all, followed by GTAO high. And lastly, we have the high fidelity objects amount. This setting controls NPC and vehicle animations. For example, in the opening scene, a Humvee's wheels only rotate on high and ultra. It doesn't affect performance or CPU usage, so if you want a more realistic animations, go with high or ultra. For competitive play, lowering it doesn't impact performance much, but can simplify animations. But I would stick to high as the best option.
And that wraps it up. These are the optimized settings I recommend for achieving the best balance between visual quality and performance. Thanks for watching and if you found this helpful, feel free to leave a like and check out the other guides as well. See you in the next one.